Hi everyone, thank you very much for attending my talk. During this presentation, I'm going to consider some potential issues for documentarity. Documentarity is the theory uh, provided by the Italian philosopher Maurizio Ferraris. Documentarity is probably the most complete theory on documents provided so far in social ontology. According to this view, the social reality is created by documents. My presentation has four main sections. In the first section, I provide a brief introduction to documentarity and I explain what it means that the social reality is created by documents. In section two and three, uh, I uh, provided uh, two cases that may be problematic for documentarity. The first case concerns a fake identity. Here, the problem is that there is a discrepancy between what is stated uh, by the documents and uh, what there is in reality. The second case concerns the relationship between an organization and its representative. Here the problem is that the reality described by the documents involved in this relationship um, presents some ontological issues. I show that, that the first case, the case of the fake identity, can be easily solved and that the solution is compatible with documentality. However, I also show that the second case is uh, uh, much more complicated and I'm not able to provide a solution to this uh, problem yet. Uh, finally, in the last part of this presentation, I draw my conclusion. So let me say something about documentality. Documentality is supposed to provide a realistic account of the social world. And the main thesis supported by Maurizio Ferraris is that recording is the condition of existence for social objects. Uh, indeed, we create social objects with uh, a social act, so an act involving at least two people. And this act is inscribed somewhere. Uh, on paper, in a computer file, or in the heads of people. All these supports are considered documents, even though they are obviously uh, documents of different sort. This uh, leads uh, Ferraris to claim that not nothing uh, socially exists outside the text, and he calls his view weak textualism, because on one hand, like uh, Jacques Derrida, he claims that the text creates the reality. But on the other hand, uh, unlike Derrida, Ferraris claims that the text doesn't create all the reality, but just uh, the social one. And uh, that's the reason why his view is called weak textualism. Ferraris theory is particularly effective when we uh, consider documents in the narrow sense, so legal documents, because it's clear that within a legal system we usually act, we perform actions uh, with uh, documents, and within a legal system one may say that a document has uh, uh, three main functions. So a document creates an entity, a document describes the properties of this entity, and finally a document proof the existence of this entity. This means that when uh, a social entity is created within uh, a legal system, uh, the existence and the nature of this uh, social entity doesn't uh, depend on people's beliefs, but uh, depends on uh, some documents, and when there is a discrepancy between uh, what people believe about a certain social entity and what is stated by a document about this entity, uh, then the priority is obviously given to the document. Other scholars defend uh, this externalist view of the social world. So, for instance, then Fitzpatrick questions the theory provided by John Searle. As we know, John Searle uh, claims that the, the collective intentionality, the we intention, plays a crucial role in the creation of the social objects. Uh, Fitzpatrick doesn't deny that there is this collective intentionality, uh, but he points out that when we 
create social objects, so for instance, when two people uh, get married, then there is also the production of an external evidence, of a document. This document counts as engaging in this specific act. So there is a sort of a priority of the document over the people's beliefs. Something similar is claimed by uh, Giuliano Torrengo. Giuliano Torrengo points out that the social world can be seen as a complex collection of rights, obligations, bonds, and usually we don't know all these uh, things. Uh, the social world, however, still stands because uh, usually we refer to some external content, some documents, and these, uh, uh, these documents specify these rights, these obligations, these rules, uh, these bonds, and so on. So, all this seems to be very reasonable. My point, however, is that in some cases, uh, there is a discrepancy between what is stated in a document and what there is in reality. So, in this case, if we claim that in reality there is what is stated uh, in a document, we endorse a form of anti-realism. And that's a problem for the weak textualism, because the weak textualism is supposed to provide a realistic account of the social world. In order to uh, show this point, I want to um, consider um, the case of a fake identity. So, within a legal system, usually uh, each newborn is assigned an identity. An identity can be seen as a collection of social properties, such as a name, uh, a date and a place of birth, uh, a citizenship, and so on. The properties I have just mentioned are not unique, so it means that more than one people can share the very same properties. That's the reason why usually each person has uh, always at least one uh, unique social property. Um, so in the US, this uh, unique social property is the social security number. Now, suppose that a person, call him John, needs a new identity, a fake identity, for a criminal purpose. And suppose that John is able to create this new identity. According to this new identity, his name is Peter. So, John and Peter have a social security number, and obviously this social security number is different. Here, the problem is that uh, the documents uh, provide, present, describe a state of affairs that actually doesn't exist in reality. Uh, because according to the documents involved in this story, in reality, there are two physical people and each of these people has his own identity. Actually, in reality, there is just one physical person with two identities. Here, the dilemma is that, on one hand, the identity is usually created and attributed with documents. So, we need to consider documents in order to understand what there is in this portion of the social reality. On the other hand, um, there are some cases, such as the case uh, of a fake identity, where uh, to rely on documents can be very misleading. So, a possible solution is to consider the collection of rules um, in which these documents are produced. One might say that a document describes reality, uh, a document is reliable in this sense, only when um, this document is produced uh, in accordance to the correct procedure. Obviously enough, the documents concerning a fake identity are not produced in accordance to the correct procedure. So, one might say that yes, documents describe reality, documents are re reliable in this sense, but these documents must be produced in accordance to the rules. And uh, so, we must add this new, this additional condition and this additional condition is perfectly compatible with documentality, since documentality is characterized by an um, uh, important normative component. 
Let's now consider the second case, the tricky one. The second case concerns the relationship between an organization and a representative. We can consider the United Nations as an instance of organization. As we know, this, uh, um, the United Nations has as members governments, and these governments have rights and obligations. So, for instance, they have the right to vote for or against a certain resolution. Some governments, such as the US government, have even the, the right uh, to block uh, a resolution. This right is called veto power. So, according to some documents, the US government, for instance, has the veto power. This veto power is practically exercised by a representative a person who has the right to exercise this power and uh, because of some documents. There are some documents that grant him the right to exercise the veto power. Now, the problem here is that we need to understand if it's possible to separate the veto power from the right to exercise this uh, power. Because if uh, it's not possible to separate these two properties, so if uh, the right to exercise the veto power implies the possession of the veto power, then if we rely on documents, we are forced to admit the same property, the veto power, twice. And so, because it seems that this uh, power, the veto power, is possessed by the US government and by its representative. So here the dilemma is, on one hand, uh, we need to consider documents in order to know what there is in reality when we consider this portion of the social reality. But on the other hand, if we rely on documents, we are forced to admit uh, redundant properties and obviously that's a problem. In order to solve this problem, one could take a step back and to focus on the action, the act of vetoing. The act of vetoing can be seen as a group illocutionary act, a collective illocutionary act. And based on uh, Grace Patterson's work on group speech acts, uh, I distinguish two types of collective illocutionary acts. A collective illocutionary act can be uh, completely uh, planned in advance. So it means that the members of a certain group agree in performing a certain act. So the proxy just performs this act and all the members of this group know that the, the proxy is going to perform this specific act. But sometimes collective illocutionary acts are not completely planned uh, in advance. So maybe a group may share a collection of guidelines and the proxy, the representative, can just uh, uh, follow these guidelines in deciding which act to perform. So let's say that in this case, the proxy, the representative, has a certain degree of freedom in deciding which act to perform and uh, why. And so in this case, the members uh, of the group don't know in advance uh, that the, the proxy is going to perform this specific act. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, find precise information about the, uh, the act of vetoing in the uh, United Nations framework. So I don't know if uh, this act is completely planned in advance or not. However, we can uh, consider both of these options in order to understand their implications. So if uh, the act of vetoing is completely planned in advance, um, then uh, probably the dilemma I'm raising uh, is not founded because if uh, the members of the US government agree in uh, performing the vetoing act in advance and if the representative just performs this act, 
then it makes sense to distinguish between the heat of power, that is the, the right to decide whether to exercise uh, this power or not, from the right to exercise uh, it. And so in this case, we can rely on documents without being forced to admit twice the same property, the property of having the veto power. However, if the act of vetoing is not completely planned in advance, then my uh, dilemma, the dilemma I'm raising, is probably founded because we cannot distinguish between the veto power and the right to exercise it. And so, again, if we rely on documents, we are forced to admit the same property twice. Now, I think that the act of vetoing in the United Nations framework um, is probably completely planned in advance. So it's uh, very likely that this specific case is not problematic for documentality. On the other hand, however, it's undeniable that in many other cases, uh, the uh, group elocution reacts are not completely planned in advance. And so here it's not possible to distinguish the right to uh, decide whether to perform or not a certain act and the right to perform this act. And so in, this, in all these cases the dilemma uh, is founded and that's problematic for documentality. Obviously uh, one may uh, try to solve this problem by working carefully on the relationship between an organization and its representative and uh, on the relationship between the rights possessed by an organization and the rights possessed by its representative. So in conclusion, during this presentation, I showed that uh, documents play a crucial role in the social world. So we need to consider them in order to understand what there is in the social world. On the other hand, however, I also discussed two uh, problematic cases. The first case concern a fake identity. In this case, there is a discrepancy between what is stated by documents and uh, what there is in, in reality. I showed that it's quite easy to provide um, a solution to this problem. Then I considered a more complex uh, case, uh, the case concerning the relationship between an organization and a representative. And I showed that in this case, to rely on documents entails to admit twice the same property. So it implies to attribute the same right to both the organization and its representative. And obviously, that's a problem for documentality. So since uh, uh, it's uh, uh, an open problem, uh, I would be very happy to have uh, your opinions about uh, uh, this. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.